Hey everybody, this is Minion Soldier. And being as there really aren't any ship updates, I thought that I would do a video surrounding this ship here. There have been multiple requests for me to talk about the cockpit view in the Hammerhead. And we're going to deal with that. But you may not hear me say what you think you're going to hear me say. I'll warn you about that right now. And I'm going to talk about the expectations, my expectations around the ship. How is it going to fit into the universe? What, it, what is it going to be like to own one? And, you know, what are some of the things that you may have to worry about if you own this ship? So without further ado, got a lot of show to do. So let's get started. Now, first things first, the cockpit view, obviously the elephant in the room. Do I think that it is a big deal? I think that it's important, but at the same time, I don't think that this is intended. Look at these two panels here on either side of the pilot. They're useless, they're illegible, right? They're totally pointless. I mean, you only see the top corner of them. Why are they like that, right? I think that this was a mistake. I think that this, I don't want to use the words that this was a rush job, but I think that as the deadline loomed, maybe certain boxes weren't ticked. And this might have been one of those boxes. Another thing that I would point to, you know, is how the top layer kind of intrudes on a person's view almost to the center point of the screen. And there's all this dead space above the monitors hanging from the ceiling. See, there's all that dead space there. And I think that as they were kind of putting the chair animations together and they were bringing everything together, that this is just kind of like the unfortunate first take at it. And this doesn't represent the final state. So I think that if you look at that area that's up there above that monitor and you translate that downwards, once you kind of move that view downwards, you're going to open things up a heck of a lot more. And so I feel that this is something that is going to be naturally corrected in the next iteration of the Hammerhead. And the Hammerhead is taking steps forward. I mean, just today I checked it out and the rear turret on the Hammerhead now works. So I don't think that this is a permanent state of affairs. It is a problem, yes, but I think that it's a problem that is so obvious that it's naturally going to be fixed. Now, moving into the universe, I'm gonna also talk about another issue and my expectations around that. But I think it's going to be a much more complicated issue. Do I think that this is gonna be a good ship to own in the verse? Yeah, I do. I think there's going to be a lot of people who are going to get a lot of mileage out of this ship. Because when I look at this ship, what I see from my point of view is this is a ship that kind of marks the transition, obviously, into capitals. But I see this as a ship that kind of straddles a little bit of both worlds. It can kind of dip its toe a little bit into the capital business, but obviously it's not something that's intended to go toe to toe with capital ships, but it may be able to eke out a living in certain ways there, but I feel that it's going to be the top of its group of ships. It's going to represent the peak of a pyramid within, you know, the sub capitals and down below. So I think that this is probably going to be one of the more profitable money earners for the mercenaries out there and for the pirates and whatnot. I think that that's where this ship is going to fall. And when I look at it, I can't help but feel that this kind of represents what I like to call the, the turning of the tide, the turning point in a video game, which is when you kind of hit a point where thanks to either your equipment, your armor, your shields, your guns, your sword, your shield, whatever, you get to a certain point gear wise that a lot of the content that was 
challenging or time consuming becomes a little bit easier, a little bit um, simpler to complete. And as such, it makes the, the whole operation a lot more efficient. And so you earn a lot more, whether it's credits, gold, whatever. You, there's a certain point, and I think a lot of you, whether you're playing a single player RPG or an MMO, you'll kind of recognize these points where your character seems to almost have turned a corner and life becomes a lot simpler. And a lot of the things that were challenging that you like to do are not so challenging anymore and they become a little bit more... I mean, the challenge is still there a little bit, but it, it becomes more about just fun and reaping the rewards. And I kind of see this ship as being one of those turning points, sort of like if you are someone who owned a prospector, right? And you've been working and working and working and grinding away with that prospector, trying to earn that big cash, and then one day you transition to the Orion. What do you think your earnings are going to be like then? Obviously, it's going to be a bit of a different animal. It's going to have different requirements. But I think that you can kind of see what I'm saying. You're going to be kind of stepping into a whole new world with that ship while still being able to kind of dip into the old world and get things done a heck of a lot faster. That's what I see when I look at this ship. However, I do have to caution you, you have to remember that the lion's share of this ship's armaments, being its turrets, but not its missiles, are going to be in the hands of the people who inhabit your ship, not in your hands. And I doubt that CIG is ever going to let us remotely control the turrets as the pilot of the ship. I, I think the chances of that occurring are slim and none in a universe where slim doesn't even exist. I mean, it's not going to happen. So for the time being, you're going to be pretty dependent on, you know, kind of bringing people aboard your ship and getting them to operate the turrets for you. Now, some people have pointed to the fact that um, there is a certain Starfarer mission where you can abduct a Starfarer that has NPCs in the turrets, and so they're already engaging your targets for you when you're flying around with this uh, Starfarer. And they've kind of said, hey, you know what? Um, you know, obviously these automated turrets are something that's already in game, so why can't we just, boom, put this onto the hammerhead? You know, so so many players might have NPC packages or they might say, just let me go to one of the shops and just buy NPCs and I can just, you know, just assign them to turrets through a simple UI and I can now use the hammerhead with NPCs banning my weapons. It's possible that CIG would do something like that, though I think it's unlikely. I think that... Ultimately, CIG is going to hold off on the NPC system until they can kind of come in and do it whole hog. They can get the whole thing in there all at once with the customizable NPCs, you know, the different NPCs that you may have on your account through extra game packages, things like that. I think that that's the route that CIG is going to go. They're going to hold off on it for the time being. They're going to want players to operate those turrets. They're going to want the metrics. They're want to get... They're going to want to get the people's feel of operating the turrets. What's it like? D does it need to be fixed? Is it working the way we want it to work? Does it need to be tweaked? That sort of thing. They're going to be looking for a lot of that information and a lot of that feedback from users. So the chances of them implementing a system that would, to a certain degree, you know, kind of, kind of run against that goal. I doubt it. I think that what we're going to see is that it's going to be players operating turrets for at least a year, at the very least. It's going to be, they're going to be player operated before we can put NPCs in them, and they're generally going to hold off on the NPCs until they can bring that whole system online, at least in a tier zero implementation, where they can bring a lot of those features in in one shot and test them out. So for the time being, I think that this is going to be something that you're going to have to operate by hand. So you're going to have to get used to kind of networking and, you know, building social connections with different players and saying, hey, who wants to operate my turrets and starting to learn who are the people that are reliable enough to operate your turrets who aren't just going to shoot, you know, the enemies 
and you know then go hey you know what i would like shooting this turret so much i'm going to shoot the friendlies too you know i think that it's going to be up to you to kind of bring those pieces together to make this ship work in missions for the time being now ship maintenance is another expense obviously the bigger the ship you have the more it's going to cost to maintain and now we kind of get into a point where should you be able to earn enough with the ship to maintain the ship default my answer would be yes but i think that cig is going to start off under a fairly restrictive regimen they're probably going to want players to kind of step into operating these ships and realizing that the big ships are a lot more involved than the small ships they're probably going to start with a fairly punishing regimen in terms of expenses when you factor in the, the fact that you're going to have to pay a crew all of these things they kind of want you to get used to those types of expenses and thinking in that manner how am i using this ship is it profitable is it smart i don't want to be sitting there and all of a sudden one day i've got my capital ship and i have to go rescue the resistance from a certain planet but now i find myself because i haven't been thinking I'm now out of fuel and unable to run away from the First Order. I mean, that would be pretty lame of me as, you know, a commander of a large capital ship. Or as the writer of an extremely mediocre sci-fi script. Now, CIG has already stated that there are going to be missions geared around ships like this now when you think about the expenses of operating a ship like this wear and tear on components which is something that we're going to see the cost of fuel which is oddly enough something that we've actually seen dramatically drop i mean or at least the fuel requirements of certain jumps if you step into the pu now and you start taking your ship around the universe you're going to find that the fuel requirements to make certain quantum jumps have been vastly reduced even a ship like this, which originally had 11,000 fuel capacity, still does, but the requirements to make a jump from, say, Alasar to Microtech and back, which would have exceeded its fuel capacity, it can now make that jump and come all the way back and still have gas in the tank. So it's pretty cool to see CIG kind of removing that one punishing aspect, but in other areas, I think that they're going to be fairly restrictive because I think that they want you to get used to the responsibilities that go along with operating a ship like this. And I think another thing that they're gonna try to go for is the idea that you're gonna have to pay people who are within your ship as the crew. They're gonna want you to get used to those things. Players, how much that's gonna cost you, negotiable but i think that there is going to be a hard limit on wear and tear on your ship and you're going to have to consider these things while you operate your ship and it's going to govern how you operate your ship to a certain degree so i don't think that this is you know the pay to win mobile that some people have labeled it as i think that this is going to be a, a pay for responsibility mobile and for some people, that is going to be a unwelcome surprise. And for others, it's going to be something that really increases their immersion and makes a lot more sense in the Star Citizen universe. Overall, I think that it's a good thing. It encourages smart play, which is never a bad thing. Now, there's one other issue that I want to raise. We're, of course, heading to the crew quarters. You know, we don't know what to expect out in deep space, so we're going to need a variety of weapons. The problem with the hammerhead is there is nowhere to store any of them, with the exception of pistols. Those little lockers are either too shallow or too small to house these weapons. And when you think about armor and how big armor can be and how bulky armor can be, depending on what you need it for, there's nowhere to store that either. This is a military vessel with no place to store weapons, so this is what the crew quarters is going to start to look like. This is how you store your weapons on the hammerhead. All these weapons are either too tall or too long to fit in the lockers that were provided when you consider the amount of crew members 
that this ship can carry and the variety of situations that you may run into, thus the variety of weapons that you're going to need to maintain because you don't want to have to go back to Olisar and buy a new set of guns every time you want to do a mission. This becomes a real problem for the ship. I mean, remember, once again, this is a military vessel. It's meant to go out there. It's got the legs to go really far out there, especially under the current values. You may run into a whole host of different missions. You never know what you're going to be doing from one day to the next. Remember, these missions are kind of randomly generated. Though there are certain specific missions that you may recognize and say, oh, I've done this mission before, you never know which order you're going to get them in, and you never know what the objectives are going to be. You never know what challenges you're going to face, and so a ship like this needs to be prepared to face those challenges. It needs to be open to different options, and storing all your guns on the floor is not really a good idea. I doubt that having all these weapons loose on the floor or skidding around on these irregular floors is going to be all that good for the client or the server as well. You know, we've got this big, open, empty gap in the middle of the ship that does nothing. Just wall it off, open it up, and just put in a row of racks where you can store guns, ammo, medipens, grenades, armor, all that cool shit. You still got a little space over there for your, you know, your spacesuits. It allows you to preserve the rest of the ship the way you want it to, but it's just going to make the ship that much better, and it's going to make it make sense. And I mean, certainly, I think that after we kind of saw in the preview the lengths that you are willing to go to to include a breakfast nook or a little cafeteria in the middle of the ship, you know, all that rearranging that you did to like make room for a lunch table but no one thought of an armory <laughs> i mean come on that's something that needs to be addressed and i think that you know once we start seeing people making all these videos of them going out doing missions running into the unexpected and having to carry all these weapons just lying around loose in the hammerhead and leaving armor lying around loose in the in the hammerhead because once again, the armor's not gonna fit in the lockers either because it's a large physicalized object. It's not all that difficult to see that it's not gonna squeeze into those lockers as well. The most you're gonna get in there is a suit jacket, some dress pants, maybe a pair of shoes and a stick of deodorant. And you have to remember that this is going to be a ship that just doesn't kind of make one run trips like a fighter. This is going to be something that's going to be out there for a little, you know, for a little while. And so they're going to want to bring a lot of these things with them so that they don't have to constantly be making stops to get basic items like weapons and armor and shit like that. So I think it's time to bite the bullet. And I know that there are going to be people internally who are going to say, oh, God, no. But I think in this case, this ship does have to go back to the art department and that central area in the ship needs to be walled off and turned into an armory. There's, I don't see any other way to fit this on the ship without making drastic changes to already existing and placed items and systems. Anyways, that's my opinion on the hammerhead. <laughs> I'm sure I've pissed some people off now. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and hopefully see you again on Monday. Ha, <laughs>for watching so, so, so if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in star citizen and squadron 42's development please follow us, please follow us, please follow us on our social media channels see you soon